Hey everyone, this is Peter with carries.net and in this video we are going to be comparing the Samsung Focus from AT&T running Windows Phone 7 and Apple's iPhone 4 also for AT&T running Apple's iOS. So let's jump into it. Uh, we are going to be comparing a few different things in these videos. First we're going to be covering the camera and its features. Then we're going to be launching an application that you can find across both app markets, the Facebook application. We're going to be going into each device's application markets. We're going to be looking at the home pages of each device. We're going to be going to the browser to carries.net and cnn.com to test browser loading speeds since both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network at the moment. While we're in those browsers, we're going to take a look at each device's keyboard. And finally, we're going to go into the music applications and end on maps with GPS tracking and just what each map application offers. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the camera. On the iPhone 4, you'll find it on the home page right there. And on the Samsung running Windows Phone 7, you press the hardware button on the right side. But actually, before we get into that, let's take a look at the form factors of each device. As you can see, Samsung's is, a, is about as thin as the iPhone 4 in one spot, and then it gets a little fat at the bottom. Uh, it is also taller than Apple's iPhone. In terms of thickness, as you can see right there, uh, it's a little bit thicker, or a little bit wider, excuse me, um, across. And then finally, the backs of the devices, you'll find the camera and the flash. Uh, on, the, on the iPhone, you'll find power up top, the 3.5 millimeter jack, volume buttons on the side, and a hold button. And then finally, on, this, on the front, you'll find your main button, your Apple button. And then on the focus, you'll find your volume keys on the left side. You'll find your micro SD input and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. On the right side, you'll find your power button and your camera button. And on the bottom is the microphone. And then on the front is the Windows Phone 7 touchscreen keys, back, start, and search. And then on the, sorry, on the bottom of the Apple, you'll also find your connector port. So let's again jump into those camera applications. So again, on the Windows Phone 7 for focus, you'll hold the camera button on the side. On the iPhone 4, you press it on the front. And I'll kind of go like this to show you different camera options. So with the focus, you'll find your zoom buttons. On the right side, you'll find the switch between camera and video. And then finally on the bottom right, you'll find your settings where you can change everything from white balance to contrast to your ISO to your photo quality to an anti-shaking feature. On the iPhone 4, you have the option to flip the camera to the front facing. When for zooming and for focus, you just tap. For zooming, I think it only works on the back. Um, when you tap, you have your zoom on the bottom, and then again, you can focus it on different areas of the screen. Uh, your flash is gonna be up top on the left, and it's set on auto right now, whereas your flash for the Windows Phone 7 is gonna be on this right side with flash always on, no flash, and flash automatic. With the iPhone 4, you can review last the recently recent photographs and videos, excuse me, on the bottom left. Their switch is on the bottom right, and you take a picture with this button right above the uh, Apple button on the bottom. So those are the differences. With the focus, you take a picture with the hardware camera key up top. And again, just to show you that they are working, there we go right there. So that is the camera application, camera features and application on both devices. Next, we have Facebook. I'll load these two at the same time. Here we go. So here's Facebook for both devices. Sorry. Well, as you can see, Apple's is loads instantly. Um, it's a little, a little less flashy than the Windows Phone 7 one, as you'll see. Um, on the Windows Phone 7, it has the standard kind of list plus swipe to different categories view, whereas on the iOS, you have your standard grid format for icons showing you different features of the app. Um, so again, on Windows Phone 7, it loads a little bit more, plus it also loads kind of pictures on your main screen, so keep that in mind. And then on the iPhone, you have to go into those sections to find those pictures and find those different friends posting. So these are the Facebook applications for both devices. Next, we're gonna get into the market. For iPhone, it's gonna be on your homepage as the App Store. 
and for Windows Phone 7 it's just going to be called the Marketplace. So let's take a look at Apple since that one is already loaded and let's reconfigure this real fast. There we go. Okay, as you can see across the top, it has new, what's hot, and a genius uh, categories or tabs. It also has tabs on the bottom to go to featured categories, top 25, search, and updates. On the front, you'll see an app of the week, a game of the week, different games to download right there, different recommendations, and then kind of some apps that you can scroll through to install. And again, you can go to the what's hot, you can go to the genius which recommends apps, and then on the bottom it has things like top 25, and then within those it has more sections at the top, top paid, top free, top grossing. So that is iPhone's app market. Let's go back to the home page on that guy. On the Windows Phone 7 you'll notice that it's going to be themed and it's themed right now with Rihanna for the re release of her new album. Also, when you start up the app, the marketplace for the first time, it's going to be different on each device, being that a carrier has the chance to have their own marketplace. In this case, it's the AT&T App Center. Samsung has put their own marketplace, so there's also a manufacturer's marketplace. This one's called the Samsung Zone. And then across all Windows Phone 7 devices, you'll find apps, games, and music. So scrolling over, you can see you know, new albums, you can see featured applications, and then back to the start. When you go into games, it goes into that Xbox Live section of the phone, where again, it gives these list type views with uh, different tabs or categories at the top. And then going back, if you go into music, it goes to your Zune, and then the apps is just a standard app market. It also lists what kind of updates you have in the bottom left, whereas on the iOS, you saw those updates in the bottom right. So let's also, Go back to the home page to compare that right now, and let's refocus this bad boy. There we go. Okay, so as you can see with the home pages, uh, Windows Phone 7 has been talking up their tiled interface for a while, and you'll see that each tile, I'm not signed into things right now, but as you can see, it kind of changes up there, and that'll change based on people's pictures, people's statuses all kinds of different information. For messages, it'll show you if you have any by placing a number right there. Um, if you've played music or videos recently in the Zune application, it'll show kind of a background image right there. And again, we have you know your different sections, your calendars, your pictures, your apps that come pre-installed. And again, the tiles kind of act like apps and widgets, letting you know information so you don't have to go into the app. Like for instance, it shows me that I have five updates in the marketplace. With iOS, it's similar, but not in this kind of a format. It doesn't necessarily have widgets that can change, you know, like this people's one is, but it does show you uh, updates and it does show you information about apps. As you can see on the App Store, it's showing 53 updates. On the mail, it says 26 new emails. And again, Apple has this grid style swipe home screen like you'll find kind of on the Samsung TouchWiz that's running Android for the Galaxy S series. And again, it shows you kind of all your apps installed and scrolling all the way over gets you to your search page. So those are the different home screens. Um, again, on top, you'll find your notification bar on Windows. You can uh, swipe down and it'll show you your notification bar as well. Um, so now let's jump into the browser. For the browser on Safari, you can't go into settings to choose a uh, view type. So we're, we're gonna have to load the mobile view on both browsers. Um, as you can see, it kind of shows you different, oh, let's also look at the keyboard while we're here. One second. There you go. Okay, so as you type in stuff, it gives you recommendations based on past history that you've been to. So we're going into carries.net. Um, the phone is silenced right now, but normally it has the standard clicking for the, or sorry, I've disabled the clicking on this keyboard, but it would normally click. Um, and again, it shows you what key you're typing on the top in larger font. It has languages, it has the numbers, and then of course it has keyboard shortcuts depending on what field you're typing in, as you can see from the .com right there. So. We'll type it into there. Now on the Windows Phone 7, again, very similar. We'll go into our Internet Explorer. We'll go to our settings first, and we'll go to mobile version. We'll go back. Let's just go to Google so that we have a fresh start on this guy. As you can see, it gave recommendations based on what you're typing. Um, and then finally, going into the keyboard, you'll notice that clicking. 
you'll also notice the recommendations. Also, you'll notice that punctuation and letters have different noises, so you know that you're typing uh, punctuation versus letters, so there we go right there. And then finally, it also gives you your shortcuts depending on what field you're in. So here's a browser test. Again, they're on the same Wi-Fi connection, so let's see what happens. So as you can see, the focus loaded that one a little bit a little quick, a little quicker than excuse me, the iOS 4. Um, let's try CNN.com now. So we'll select all dot and on this one cnn.com again we will push go at the same time or try to so uh, again on the focus the browser loaded it a little a little more quickly but as you can see on the left the views are a little bit different in what you can see so again each browser uh, renders the screens differently it would seem and so not the best of tests, but I mean, you guys can kind of see what we're talking about in terms of browser comparison. Um, let's refocus that. Sorry, so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. So as you can see on the left, iOS 4 is a big picture with Obama, whereas the focus has a small picture of Obama for the headline, um, and those are the browser applications. So let's get into the music applications on your iOS device, you're going to have the standard iPod, uh, this is the start screen, you can go to your videos, your songs, your artists, your playlists along the bottom, and then it has these categories right there. On the focus, you have your Zoom, and again, that has your music, videos, podcasts, radio, you can go into the marketplace, if we had recently played a song on the Zoom, it would have that album's artwork in the background, and a quick example of that, not to rain on Samsung's parade. As you can see on this HD7, when we go into the Zoom app, it has Chromio's uh, album artwork in the background based on what I listened to last. So that is what I'm talking about in terms of customization for your Zoom. Um, as you can see, again, standard kind of formats that you have for Windows Phone 7 and iPhone. So let's jump into the Maps application. We'll load these at the same time to see if the GPS is on par. And in this one, we this one has Google Maps. As you can see, it does that blue blob, and then it does the circle on it, and then the circle gets lower as you uh, focus in on your position. And on the Samsung, you'll notice the square with the yellow circle in the middle, and that also has a radius that will then um, zoom in and get smaller based on how fast it's tracking. So each one, did it in about the same time, so pretty standard. As you can see, this is the different Google Maps kind of view, um, that as opposed to the Bing Maps on the right. Google's is a little more colorful.